very long and very, very difficult journey to be where he is at this point, about to rejoin society. Uh, that's going to be a very happy day, a very joyous day for a lot of folks, not just him and his family, but Chaplain Cash and all of us that knew him and love him and can't wait to see him as we like to refer wearing uh, free world clothes. And we'll probably have a near the same crowd of, full of Kairos people so. that told yes, me, sir. let us know when he's coming, I'll be there. Absolutely. So this is a guy that's really made an impact on the Kairos prison ministry. <coughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, there's more I want to say, but I don't know how to say it. Thank you. Dad, let me give you some updates. I've been on the phone with Julius Campbell behind Dad's back over the last week. His counselor that had his paperwork went on vacation and turned his paperwork over to another person. The other person lost it. So when his counselor came back from vacation, resubmitted the paperwork, they have to do a home visit. Julius has been in kind of a, I called it a transitional home. I said, Julius, that sounds better than a halfway house. He's been working. And he checks out and checks in very successfully. And um, so the paperwork, the home visit was done, the paperwork was ready, and then the hurricane came. And they had to evacuate. And I said, Julius, if they don't just let you go, they don't have to worry about evacuating you. You can take care of yourself. But he's due. I talked to him yesterday, I believe. He's getting out Thursday. Great God. And I told him, yes. Yeah. So, uh, Dad has written countless letters trying to get his release earlier. And, um, but it's so nice to talk to him. And, but Thursday is supposed to be his due date. Right. And I said, we will be sure that you get to Union Baptist. Yeah. So, you have that to look forward to. Here's one of the things I forgot. One of these <laughs> things that are staying up higher than me, I think. <laughs> Mara has been my associate pastor. Anytime I want to call on her to fill the pulpit, she'll do it. Now, she's not an ordained minister, at least not yet, but I, I want to go on record that when the motion is made that it be written, Robert M. Cash is recommending her to be ordained in the ministry. If that ever happens, be sure it's written that way, okay? <laughs> she wants to say something you put not now, Mary. <laughs> I was going to say, just like Pam, I do better behind his back sometimes. <laughs> so, um, we do have a, another presentation. This is actually from Eddie and Eve. Eddie couldn't be here as well, but he's seeing in a letter that we framed. From and Ghana. From Ghana. And it's a certificate of honor um, presented in honor to Reverend and Mrs. Robert Cash as a demonstration of Coast for Christ Ministries deep appreciation for your love and unflinching support for the people of Ghana in particular and of Africa in general. Through your immense passion for ministries and other kind of contributions, hundreds of African people have had access to a formal education. Many others have been saved through the preaching of the gospel message. Many churches have been planted and others have had various means of livelihood which would include music, improved health, gained vocal skills, gained access to safe drinking water, and some have become leaders of churches. In Liberia, you specialized in giving James R. Davis Memorial Baptist Church its beauty by adding your finishing touches. In Ghana, you left behind your trail. I think that's cute, actually. <laughs> you left behind your trail an army of potential musicians some of whom have become professional by this time. Reverend Cash, your love for me was special. We are grateful to you for your continuous partnership with Coast for Christ Ministries. To God be the glory. May the Lord who called you to reach people for Christ, including those in God, and for that matter, Africans, for Him, bless and keep you and your family. We salute you, comrade in the vineyard, dated on this first day of September, in the year of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 2019. Reverend Edward John Ani, PhD, Founder, Chief Executive Officer.
even have to know any your name to know what this means to me. Fabulous God. How many of you have heard him speak right here? Some of you have. Yes. Yes. You, you don't. This guy rubs off on people. <laughs> he has a way of people wanting to assist close to Christ ministry. And my little bit was mainly, I don't know, half a dozen cornets, one trombone, one euphonium, and uh, they, they even called it Robert Cash Brass Band Ministry. Every <laughs> <laughs> thing they start, they, they add ministry to it. So they had seven or eight different types of ministry. We, we appreciate it so much. Brother Cash is like a dad to me too. And we wanted to recognize Miss Pauline as well. Now, Brother Cash has always told me to love everybody. And he always adds in warts and all. <laughs> so if y'all haven't heard him say that, I was expecting him to do it at least twice today in sermon, and he didn't do it. He had an opportunity at least twice. So this is our certificate of appreciation awarded to Miss Pauline Campbell Cash. Now, the rest, everybody else in the family plays or sings or does something with an instrument. So I wanted to recognize her as being instrumental <laughs> in leading others to support and love Brother Cash for 67 years, warts and all. <laughs> Got her a knockout rose. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said I wasn't going to say anything. You want a microphone? No, I, I don't need a microphone. He's a preacher. I'm Doug Burl and. Doug Burl? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Burl. <laughs> and uh, about 62 years ago. Uh, maybe a little more than that, maybe, maybe a little less than that, about 59 years ago. God reached down and touched me. That's fine. Take your time. This man led me to Christ. I was a boy. He baptized me. He encouraged me. He's my father in the ministry. He's been gracious to me to allow me to invite me to come and preach revivals with him. I was privileged to come here. Um, his family, I love them so deeply and so much, and they've touched me and been part of my life. Uh, I want to say a word about the children of Pauline and Robert Cash. These are remarkable people. Now, Robert, we know, has touched so many lives in the ministry. But in the ministry of his family, he has touched probably thousands upon thousands. His daughter Pam, uh, whom I had the chance to be with at the great University of Georgia. About <laughs> Amen. They started in the creek playing together in the creek right below his house. That's, that's true. <laughs> and and, and um, she, through her ministry of music in the schools, has touched hundreds and hundreds, well, thousands of lives um, in her teaching music. Um, uh, you know, I just can't say enough about how much she has influenced me. And how many people have been touched by Pauline and Robert through her? And Sheila. How many children, Sheila? You, you must know somewhere how many children came through your, your choruses and classrooms. And how many parents, and how many schools, and how many communities. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people have been blessed by the hands of these two through their children. Bob Cash is undoubtedly, and I'll pull Terry in here in just a minute, but is undoubtedly one of the greatest organists in the southeastern United States. 
and his his blessings through music uh, have been um, legendary. Really. Um, and I've come back today, and, I, and I'll say Terry, you know, is an incredible accompanist, and the team of Sheila and Terry have been amazing, <coughs> and continues to be as all of them. Robert, I've come back to give you a report report on your son in the ministry. Over the 43 years I've been pastor, um, I've pastored 14 churches. I've preached about 6,000 sermons. I've performed about 300 plus marriages, 500 plus funerals. Why don't we get more of them than married? I don't know. Baptized, I don't know how many children. And adults. Thousands of hospital visits and nursing home visits and visits to the sick and the study in. And um, I don't even know how many individual counseling sessions. And um, <laughs> administrative meetings. I've come back to say my ministry, everywhere I go, you will. You were with me. You were in me. And you touched people you'll never see. And I hear the reports from Africa. You're privileged to have had this man for your pastor. I was privileged. He changed my family. He and Paul and together. Changed my family's life in ways I could never imagine. I couldn't play the instrument. Robert, but my son must have somehow reached back through the years and understood that, that man behind the desk that jumped out for the horn was somewhere to be in his DNA because he's a professional trumpet player today and serves in the U.S. Army uh, as, as that. And, and I just wanted to I couldn't go through this without saying to you and to this congregation people here um, thank you and I know you're not through. <laughs> he is a prodder. <laughs> but I know your Father in heaven and all of us will say, well done. You good at faith. Let me, let me tell you where his preaching began. It ran again in the yard. I don't know whether he was preaching or his big brother uh, was preaching. But I heard that they were preaching that you're going to hell if you don't go to Sunday school. <laughs> I don't know where you find that in Scripture, but they were out with a soapbox or something out in the yard preaching, and I know Daddy heard it. And at that time, his dad was not going to church, and when Dr. E.B. Cash, my first cousin, preached a revival on Saturday night, this is the, this is the guy's father that... that that uh, had his Helen call his wife, can you come down here? We need you. It was midnight. I thought it was marital problems. I, I, I didn't know why. I thought they were close, but it wasn't there. The hounds of heaven was after him, and he was doubting his salvation. And he had come to the revival that week, and God's Spirit had worked with him. But maybe it started in the yard when this little kid was preaching that you go to hell if you don't go to Sunday school. God has blessed you, and maybe begin right there with your dad. Thank you very much. Thank you all so much for coming. We're now going to move to the fellowship hall, and you can continue any discussions you want in there while we eat. Let's stand as we are having our blessing. Father, we thank you for this time we've had together and continue to have. And dear Lord, we know that time with each other is time with you. Time with you is also time with each other. Thank you for your love for us, dear Lord. We pray your blessings on our food. In Christ's name, amen. amen. amen.